prohibit. What's the rate of autism in the United States versus Denmark? Where your, your, your core data. And he stumbled and bumbled around and he acted like he didn't know what I was saying, like he couldn't speak English, but he'd just given a perfectly good seminar in English. And after asking him twice, I said, just tell me, you know you're not doing this study on a good database. It's invalid. And then Marie McCormick, the chairman of me, told me to quit harassing the speaker. But, you know, this is it. It's, uh, it, it was nothing more than, uh, you know, just, it's, it's, it's not even good fraud. I mean, it is the kind of fraud that any of you people looking at that, with somebody there telling you what it's about, would understand that these, these studies are just totally invalid. And I think that, and I would like just to ask it, we have one in six children with a neurological disorder, according to the CDC. Why aren't we mad? Our children, infants are dying faster than 40 other countries. We have one of the highest rates of neurological disorder in this country. And I would suggest to you, we've got something wrong. And the wrong comes down that we use the infants and their potential illnesses to make money and not to try and keep them healthy so they make good citizens later on. And I'm sorry to be rude. I'm usually a very pleasant and nice guy. But you're looking at controlled rage when I start talking about this. Because I do understand, I do understand when people are manufacturing confusion. And that's what the Danish studies were all about. And that's what Dr. Geyer and those guys presented. When you read those, that Freedom of Information Act, they were paying people to manufacture confusion. But in the USA, we are the most highly vaccinated children in the world. And yet, we're number 41 on the infant mortality list. So for the pediatricians in here and the people who say we ought to keep vaccinating as usual, I want you to explain to me, what 40 countries, what are they doing to cause their children to live longer than what we're doing? Maybe we should go mimic some of the things they're doing. And I would you know, implore you to consider the fact that they don't vaccinate nearly as early and nearly as often. And they even, like in Denmark, where all the elegant studies were done to show autism wasn't caused by thimerosal, they don't have thimerosal in their vaccines. Dr. Russell Eckert works for the Division of Disease Control at the Florida Department of Health, where he provides oversight and management to the bureaus of epidemiology, HIV AIDS, immunizations, sexually transmitted diseases, TB control, and refugee health. So I, uh, I work for the Department of Health. One thing that is that is really kind of being overlooked, I think, is that in 1999, the FDA put out a memo, I saw it on their own website, recommending the removal of thimerosal from all childhood vaccines. Nobody will dispute that, I don't think, and I don't know if you could, because I actually physically saw it myself. It has nothing to do with, you know, opinion or not opinion or whether vaccines cause it or don't cause it or mercury. Everybody agrees that mercury is a toxin. We can sit there and downplay the ethyl mercury issue from now until the cows come home. I think it's ethyl mercury. I don't know. I've heard so many different terms. But why aren't we just, I understand the economics, because you brought up a very valid, that's 99% of the reason is economics. The whole reason their thimerosal is still in vaccines, in my opinion, is economics. So the question is, if the FDA recommended removing it since 1999, why aren't we just saying remove it from everything and be done with it? I know that you probably can't answer that, but I mean... Well, we don't, you know, we don't control what um, manufacturers put in their vaccines. That's the FDA's job, right? But what we can say is if the, if the vaccine has been approved and these studies are showing that it's safe, we will go ahead and utilize that vaccine um, uh, to immunize our vulnerable population. So I, I, understand, I understand your position, but my question is this. If the FDA in 1999... To, to just clarify that in our public health system, children below the age of three are receiving completely thimerosal-free vaccines in all of our centers, and they've been doing so for, for a while now. So that, that I wanted just to, to put on the record as something that's to make it absolutely clear. Not correct. To this day, Florida physicians continue to purchase vaccines containing thimerosal and give it to children under three years of age. My question is this, if the FDA in 1999, forget about all the stuff since, all the studies, all the you know, parents want this, but if, since 1999 they recommended removing it from all childhood vaccines. Is that true or not? 
The, uh, uh, yes, that's true. Okay. The FDA and the, met with the American Academy of Pediatrics and several other organizations to talk about the issue, okay? And what they did is they recommended that manufacturers begin to remove thimerosal from the vaccines because of if there is, there wasn't a lot of, there were a few studies, very little data about thimerosal exposure. Plenty of data about methylmercury exposure. Very little data, data about ethyl mercury exposure, which is in thimerosal. So they were basing everything on what the studies showed in terms of the toxicity of methyl mercury. Ethyl mercury may be different, may not be as toxic. Listen to what Dr. Boyd Haley, one of the leading experts in mercury toxicity, says about that. I want to tell you, mercury is what we call pleotypic toxin. It doesn't go in like cyanide, stop your ATP synthesis, you die. It goes in, it affects your immune system, it affects your nervous system, it affects your digestive system. And that's the reason you have so many hypotheses out there because, as my granddad used to say, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Mercury can cause all of these problems that we're talking about. It leaves no biological system alone. There has not been one publication done anywhere where they have added levels of mercury or thimerosal that we're talking about in a living system where it has not been found to be extremely toxic. It is not safe. And this is what Dr. Mark Geyer, a board-certified epidemiologist, has to say. Thimerosal is a unique poison, almost totally unique. Most poisons are poisonous in parts per million. Lead, for example. This is poisonous in parts per billion. Just to give you an idea of the toxicity, if you take one grain of salt from your salt shaker, you put it in, in if you happen to be lucky enough to have a home swimming pool, you put it in your home swimming pool, that's the level, at that dilution, will kill human neurons. Are there some studies out there on how many vaccines can be safely given at one time? Uh, I'm not familiar with uh, any studies that look at the safety of combining. All I guess kinds eight, to me, I'm not a doctor, I'm you know, yeah. just a mom, but uh, eight sounds like quite an overload. There's not some even industry standard among physicians that, you know, in general we give four at a time, and that's it, you know. To, to my knowledge, there isn't studies, there aren't studies that are looking specifically at the number of vaccines administered at any one time. Are, are you aware whether there is tracking information for those uh, kids who, uh, because of exemptions that their parents have claimed, uh, what their rate of diagnosis with autism is over time, either beginning with kindergarten or moving along uh, in no, age? We don't, we don't have a registry of um, all, all autistic uh, children in the state of Florida. Um, there are no registries um, that exist that, that have all the um, um, children affected by autism reported. The question was, does the Department of Health have a database or registry that shows those not vaccinated and the rate of autism in that group? The answer was no. In fact, the Department of Health does not have a database or registry to show how many children in the state of Florida have autism. Healy came out not too far ago and said after she reviewed the data the CDC came out with the, the stuff you're relying on because you're in public health, uh, that the data is flawed she has concerns on the way it was evaluated and that vaccines may not be safe and that thimerosal might be dangerous. I don't believe Bernadine Healy was making that, those statements in the context of her position on the IOM. Um, and, and she, I believe, is, not, is no longer the head of the National Institute of Health. Um, I can tell you that what I know is that she's a cardiologist, um, not an immunologist, not a pediatrician, uh, not an infectious She's the head of NIH. Expert. They thought she was something. Of, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that she's not qualified, that she doesn't have... Uh, the credentials to lead uh, the National oh, Institute of Health. On May 12, 2008, CBS News correspondent Cheryl Atkinson interviewed the former head of the National Institute of Health, Dr. Bernadine Healy. Healy says, in part, government too quick to dismiss possible link between vaccines and autism. When I first heard that there was a link between autism and vaccines, I thought, well, that's silly. Uh, really, I mean, I tended to dismiss it just on the superficial um, kind of reading or, you know, just reading what was in the papers, no offense to the media. Um, 
So when I first heard about it, I thought, well, that doesn't make sense to me. The more you delve into it, if you look at the basic science, if you look at the research that's been done in animals, if you also look at uh, some of these individual cases, and if you look at the evidence that there is no link, what I come away with is the question has not been answered. But public health officials have been saying they know. They've been implying to the public they know